story of deep sorrow to overflowing joy. When you think of Hannah, think of diligence and faith. At a time in history when infertility gained a woman both scorn and ridicule, Hannah encountered an added grief. She became the object of harsh mocking by her husband's other wife. God can show up to do much more than we expect. Hannah experienced this much needed but lavish and overflowing goodness that takes us out of our deepest valley of agony into a mountain where all we can see is unending joy. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verses 1 to 8. There was a certain man from Ramathaim, a Zephite from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zeph, an Ephraimite. He had two wives. One was called Hannah and the other Peninnah. Peninnah had children, but Hannah had none. Year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to his wife Peninnah and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her and the Lord had closed her womb. Because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Her husband Elkanah would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? One moment she was a depressed woman that longed to have children, but couldn't have one for years. However, the next moment, she was rejoicing, because her shame had been wiped off, and she had great honor in its place. Isaiah chapter 61 verses 7 and 8 Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion, and instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people and to make an everlasting covenant with them. God promises that if we keep our eyes fixed on Him, Despite the pain in our hearts, we will surely return with joy, bringing in our abundant harvests. Hannah fixed her eyes on God, and indeed, Hannah got a new beginning that looked like a dream. From 1 Samuel chapter 1 we read, Once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Not so, my lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She said, 
May your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. Early the next morning they arose and worshipped before the Lord, and then went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah made love to his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, Because I asked the Lord for him. And she said to him, Eli, Pardon me, my Lord, as surely as you live, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. The most fantastic part of Hannah's testimony wasn't just that she gave birth to the great prophet, but four extra kids. That is how much God wants to fill our lives to the brim and make us overflow with His grace as He makes us forget the anguish of the past. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verses 19 to 21 Each year his mother made him a little robe and took it to him when she went up with her husband to offer the annual sacrifice. Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife, saying, May the Lord give you children by this woman to take the place of the one she prayed for and gave to the Lord. Then they would go home, and the Lord was gracious to Hannah. She gave birth to three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. Hannah couldn't hide her song of gratitude. Just like the book of Psalms declares what we will feel when we experience God's more than enough and extravagant deliverance. 1 Samuel chapter 2 Then Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Do not keep talking so proudly, or let your mouth speak such arrogance. For the Lord is a God who knows, and by him deeds are weighed. The bows of the warriors are broken, but those who stumbled are armed with strength. Those who were full hire themselves out for food, but those who are hungry are hungry no more. She who was barren has borne seven children, but she who has had many sons pines away. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes and has them inherit a throne of honor. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. On them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful servants, but the wicked will be silenced in the place of darkness. It is not by strength that one prevails, those who oppose the Lord will be broken. The Most High will thunder from heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Remember when God delivered Israel from the hold of Pharaoh in Egypt? It would have been good enough to set them free with so many signs and wonders to prove his love, but he did much more. This is why, just like Hannah, they had a great praise song. Exodus chapter 15 Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters have covered them. They sank to the depths like a stone. 
Your right hand Lord was majestic in power. Your right hand Lord shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty you threw down those who opposed you. God had taken it a notch higher by letting them go out with so much treasure as recompense for their years of servitude. Exodus chapter 12 verses 35 and 36 The Israelites did as Moses instructed and asked the Egyptians for articles of silver and gold and for clothing. The Lord had made the Egyptians favorably disposed toward the people and they gave them what they asked for so they plundered the Egyptians. He also promised to take them to a promised land, flowing with milk and honey. So they weren't just going to be rescued and enslaved people, but people living with ease, rest, and overflow in the new land they were heading to. The only thing he requires from us as we move from utter despair to exultant and overwhelming joy is to remember the God who made his good will a reality. How would you have reacted if you were Hannah? Hannah refused to lash out at her rival, instead turning her grief and loss over to God. She prayed fervently to her Lord, pleading with him for a son. She refused to accept that her difficult situation would be permanent. God rewarded her faith with a son, Samuel. When the time came for her to keep her word and commit Samuel to the Lord's service, she did so gratefully. Hannah's life was changed by prayer, and it had an impact on an entire nation. God used her son as a prophet during King David's lifetime, and his influence outlasted him as he gave great impetus to the prophetic movement. God also blessed Hannah with many more children, demonstrating his delight in his people's faith and perseverance. Hannah's story reveals God's innermost thoughts. God does not condemn human desire. Her husband tries to console her, but Hannah's desire for a son was unquenchable. Hannah's story also demonstrates how God can use human frailty to accomplish great things. Hannah's son Samuel grew up to be a great man of God, the final judge and prophet who anointed Israel's first two kings. But why was Hannah's story required? Why not just start with Samuel in the tabernacle or at the start of his judgeship? Why not simply let him be born to a God-fearing couple and send an angel to tell them to dedicate their son to God? In short, why involve Hannah's grief? Because God is glorified in Hannah's story. Her weakness, her trust in God as she turned to him, the fervency of her desire, and her faithfulness in bringing Samuel to God as promised are all evidence of God working in Hannah's life. Her tears were ordained to be part of the glorious story of what God was doing in Israel's history. Every person has desires that cannot be satisfied and circumstances that cause grief. We frequently do not understand these things, but Hannah's life demonstrates that God knows our story from start to finish, that everything has a purpose, and that trust in Him is never misplaced. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I am grateful for every single time in the past when you took away my shame and replaced it with honor, just like you did for Hannah. Thank you for lifting every burden and pain in my heart. I am grateful because you did not just take it away. You replaced it with your joy that nothing can compare with. Father, I ask for grace this day because I need your strength to face every obstacle. I know that your grace is always sufficient for me. So as I remember how you came through to make a way where there was no way previously, I know you will yet give me victory. Thank you for answering all my prayers. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.